I'm at that point right now, you know, where everything is starting to feel a little bit dirty and dingy and, and in spring and you want to clean up. So that's what I'm going to do today. You know, woodworkers have a rather magic trick, right, when it comes to cleaning up their workbench. They don't take out the soap and the brushes or anything like that. What they use is a hand plane, right? Now the question is whether I need to remove everything underneath here or not. I mean, it's never a bad idea. It gives you a perspective of what you have on hand and nothing falls off. So this bench here, very utilitarian, very basic, made with framing lumber for the top, glued up, which I think is a really great design for a bench because it's cheap. It doesn't make it very precious, you know, where you're afraid of of damaging your bench. It's okay to be damaged. I mean, it's supposed to be used, right? And the base is really just, you know, framing lumber as well. Four by fours. Room a bit. Oh, wow. This takes up a lot of room, doesn't it? Kind of realize now why I put it that way. It is kind of cool though, isn't it? Now the plane I'm using for this is this Stanley Sweetheart Low Angle. Is it a sweetheart? Stanley Low Angle Jack Plane, number 62. Yeah, 62. Um, and so what's nice about this one is first of all, it's quite long, you know, so that means that you're gonna get a more, like it's gonna be easier to keep it level as you're planing. For example, for a comparison, here we got a little block plane and just see how short that is. And this is more aggressive too. The angle is not quite as low. Like this angle is really low. The uh, block plane is a little higher. So this one is not as aggressive and uh, because of the long base, you'll be able to keep it more level, right? Because that's the point, right? When we are planing a bench like this, we obviously want to clean it up, but we also want to get any points that are high um, to, you know, come down. Uh, we want the whole thing to be level. So what once was level <laughs> may, you know, alter over time. Plus it's a glue up, so, you know. Although glue ups are actually quite stable if you compare it to a solid piece of wood, so. But you can see when I'm planing that some spots are a little high. They, you know, get they get planed down the fastest. And some spots are a little bit, uh, a little lower. Of course, here it's so visual. You can really see um, because the, the color is so different. There's, it's so dirty. So it's very clear, like which point. Not too long ago, I did sharpen the blade on my Tormek. So it should be uh, in good shape in terms of sharpness to start with. Must say I rather like having access to the bench all around. So I'd say most planes operate on the same basic concept when it comes to taking the, uh, the blade apart. This one's pretty simple. Two different screws here, so I'll just lower it and then loosen it. Now we can take this apart. So this was sitting like that, now we can move it. Now this, this is the blade. So you can see the bevel is this direction. There. So this one right here matches up with the bottom there. And this, so this slips in here and that means that you can advance or move this blade with this one. And this is just like a holding place that go in here. Now if that happens, you have to make sure that you don't mess your place up so that you can, this one goes in there and this one goes back like that because it's gonna slip in there. And then we want to make sure we put this back in this direction and not this direction. So what is this dropping exactly? I mean, there isn't much to it. You have a piece of leather. This is on this gorgeous um, kind of holder here with magnets. There's a plan of this on, on the website. Um, and then you need compound. You can have, there's different kinds of compounds. I actually rather like the one that comes in a tube. I don't have any of that right now. This is just like, almost looks like chalk. So you just kind of, Put some compound on the leather and then you get your, your blade, put this at an angle, find the angle of your bevel and just 
move down. It moves the um, the burr a little bit. It just cleans it up. Like every time I do a strapping like this, I'm always amazed by how effective a little bit of leather and, and compound can be. That can yield this hard steel, keep it in, uh, in good shape. It makes a big difference, especially if you don't wait too long in between doing it. Uh, if you get it as a habit to do a little strapping in between. Uh, so you just do it a couple times, make sure you get their angle right. And then you can get the burr off. Whenever someone gets anxious by using a hand plane, I think it's almost always because they are unsure of how to put it back together again. They're unsure how to sharpen it. And if you can't sharpen it, um, it's no fun. So first of all, let's get any de debris out of there. Okay. Then let's put our, our blade back down. This goes, flat side goes down. So here, and this is just kind of a, a protective cover to keep it in place. So go there and then it slides down. We can tighten this. And then when we want to advance it or now it's, that's pretty aggressive. I just kind of feel it very, very lightly. You don't want to like, like slice your finger down of course, but so if I want to bring it down, I actually find it easier if I can feel it slightly. So then I just loosen this and then I just move this one. Remember this is the one that controls uh, whether the blade go up and down. So I just bring it back a little bit, tighten it, feel again. Oh, I'd say that's pretty good. I want it to be relatively aggressive here because, you know, actually trying to... Beautiful. Now, I'm not an expert planer by any means, but the technique that I like to use when I do this is that whenever I bring it back, I just bring it up just a little bit because you don't want the blade to interact with the... Uh, with the, with the wood here on the way back. So I bring it up a little bit so it's not touching. And then I do this and I hold it at a slight angle. You know, I think I'm gonna actually go a little bit more aggressive. Sometimes you kind of forget which direction. So you just kind of put your hand there, feel it a little bit, tighten. And that, like, if you don't have a good result, you can always redo it, it's no big deal. So these shavings here might be on the slightly thick side. And then when you get stuck, you just kind of try to go with momentum. Another good little tip, when you don't mind being rather aggressive when you're planing, is to actually go crossways. Because that way you really clean it up quite well and the grain doesn't get affected as much, like there's less tear out um, and um, it doesn't, yeah, you can always go back and clean it up again if you want to later, but it's quite effective. Um, the other thing about that too is that you are avoiding any weird dips or high points or low points when you're going like that direction. Planning is so much fun, I think. Um, and the one thing I was thinking about too is whenever I have an issue, it's because I don't have enough follow through, right? It's when I don't, I don't have enough like power. Um, if you're kind of doing it like, you get stuck, right? But if you have like an idea that you're going to end up over there, you don't think about the point right there that you're actually going to play. You think about that one over there. So you think about where you want to end up. You think about that follow through, right? And that way, you're like more nimble, but also more like more powerful when you're doing it. Because you want to have control, right? You don't want to accidentally like have the whole thing fly out of your hand. Um, so you want control, but you also want this kind of flow where you move it and you lift it up. You move it and you lift it up. Now this is probably old news to a lot of people who do hand planing, but I think hand planing is something that a lot of people are either in or they're out. I go like in and out, <laughs> but they're like, they either know it really well or they don't. And it's really intimidating. And it's such a cool tool, right? It's such a simple tool yet effective tool. Um, I think it's fun. This is fun. And it's cool because it is such an immediate change, right? And if it gets dirty, just do it all again.
actually uh, one of my favorite things to do with like clean, beautiful shavings is to use them for packaging material for when I ship out my wax pots and wax polishes. I just think it's so nice. You open a, a package up that you ordered and then you get met by that, like that smell of pine or fur or whatever it is, that good smelling wood that is. Um, and it's like nice and cushiony. Now I don't always have like a lot of shavings on hand for that, but whenever I do, it's what I like to use. So these shavings right here going in the uh, packaging box. So now we're at the point where I've done a lot of cross things, got it pretty clean. I think about as clean as it's going to get because some of these other stains are um, a little bit deeper cuts, that kind of thing. So now I'm just going to try to kind of clean it up, remove like cross marks, make sure it is nice and level and flat. Not like any weird dips anywhere. Well, now I've been planning to the point where I'm getting blisters on my hands. I haven't really done any planning in a while, you know, not like this anyway. So, uh, next step here, this, is, this looks pretty good. I can't find my level, but um, I've been looking around, it looks pretty straight. I think it's absolutely fine. It looks nice and fresh. What I wanna do, I wanna add some of our wax polish on here, just to kind of uh, protect it a little bit. Give it a nice little finish to it. So we offer three different kinds of wax polish, right? And to be honest, you could really use any of it on here. But the polish that I really like to use in shop situations is our linseed oil. Um, it cures kind of like, um, like tongue oil. And you can actually see this jar here is really old. There is some kind of harder stuff. This is what happens to wax polish when it over time uh, just kind of cures and this is actually what you want to see. It means that it's working. It means that this is what it would do on the wood too. It would kind of cure a surface over time. Um, and what you do, um, you just kind of peel this off. Now this probably won't happen to your tin because you'll use it. I just kind of, I have a whole, so many different tins around with a little bit of everything and so I, what I do is I just take a bunch on a piece of cloth. You can use steel wool if it's a nicer something where you want to kind of create a super smooth surface. In this situation I don't really care. Give it just a little bit of a warmer tone and primarily why I like to do this is because it just protects it a little bit. If you had a big, big, big spill or you're finishing something else this would, wouldn't soak it up quite to the same degree. And it's just nice like with tactile things that you touch and you use all the time. I don't really know what the consensus is for finishing workbenches, what people usually do. Um, I kind of think that this is one of those instances where wax polish is really great because, I don't know, it's a material here that you'll use it, you can apply more. I'm not looking for a pristine like polyurethane surface for a work table. I don't want that kind of glossy finish. Um, okay, kind of shavings on the ground. A beautiful new top, right? I mean, it looks brand new. Well, not brand new. I mean, there are quite a lot of marks on it still, you know, chisel marks, uh, drill marks. But I mean, that's what I like. Like, I like that it, it's not pristine, but it does look clean and fresh and ready for a new season. Um, if you want to pick up wax polish, as always, is at darbenover.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I'm, I'm really kind of liking this uh, <laughs> this position. It makes me feel like hmm, moving stuff around, redoing my back wall, stuff like that. It's just kind of nice, like standing behind here. So anyway, it's kind of nice with change because it changes up the energy, right, of a space. Even if like you don't have to keep it forever, right? You can like okay, this can I can move it here for a little while and um, wow, ooh, the edge, the edge of of the I kind of need to go over that with a plane a little bit, clean that up a little bit, smoothen it out because it's kind of sharp. Didn't think about that. So anyway. Um, hope you're doing well. Thanks for hanging out with me. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.